Let's talk about AI a little bit. What are your thoughts about GPT-3 and language models trained with self-supervised learning? It when came out quite a bit ago, but mm -hmm. I wanted to get your thoughts on it. Yeah. In the 90s, I was in New Zealand and uh, I had an amazing professor, Ian Witten, who realized I was bored in class and put me in his lab and he gave me the task to discover grammatical structure in an unknown language. And the unknown language that I picked was English because it was the easiest one to find a uh, corpus for, a construct one. Mm -hmm. And uh, he gave me the largest computer uh, at the whole university. It had two gigabytes of RAM, which was amazing. And I wrote everything in C with some in-memory compression to do statistics over the language. And uh, I first would create a dictionary of all the words, which basically tokenizes everything and compresses things so that I don't need to store the whole word, but just... Um, a code for every word. And then I was um, taking this all apart in sentences and I was trying to find uh, all the relationships between all the words in the sentences and do statistics over them. And uh, that proved to be impossible because um, the complexity is just too large. So if you want to discover the relationship between an article and a noun, and there are three adjectives in between, you cannot do n-gram statistics and look at all the possibilities that can exist, yeah. at least not with the resources that we had back then. So I realized I need to make some statistics over what I need to make statistics over. So I wrote something that was pretty much a hack that did this for um, at least first order relationships. And I came up with some kind of mutual information graph that was indeed discovering uh, something that looks exactly like the grammatical structure of the sentence, mm -hmm. just by trying to encode the sentence in such a way that the words would be written in the optimal order mm -hmm. inside of the model. And uh, what I also found is that if we would be able to increase the resolution of that and uh, not just use this model to reproduce grammatically correct sentences, we would also be able to correct stylistically correct sentences by just having more bits in these relationships. And if we wanted to have meaning, we would have to go much higher order. And I didn't know how to make higher order models back then without spending way more years in research on how to make the statistics over what we need to make statistics over. Mm -hmm. And um, this thing that we cannot look at the relationships between all the bits in your input is being solved in different domains in different ways. So in computer graphics, the um, computer vision standard method for many years now is convolutional neural networks. Convolutional neural networks are hierarchies of filters that exploit the fact that neighboring pixels in images are usually semantically related and distance pixels in images are usually not semantically related. So you can just by grouping the pixels that are next to each other hierarchically together, reconstruct the shape of objects. Mm -hmm. And this is an important prior that we build into these models so they, they can converge quickly. But this doesn't work in language for the reason that adjacent words are often but not always related and distant words are sometimes related while the words in between are not. Right? So how can you learn the topology of language? And I think for, for this reason that this difficulty exists, that the uh, transformer was invented in natural language processing, not in vision. And what the transformer is doing, it's a hierarchy of layers where every layer learns what to pay attention to in the given context in the previous layer. Mm -hmm. So what to make the statistics over. And, and the context is significantly larger than the adjacent word. Yes. So the context that this um, that GPT-3 has been using, the transformer itself is from 2017, and it uh, wasn't using that large of a context. Um, OpenAI has basically scaled up this idea as far as they could at the time. And the context is um, to about 2,048 symbols, tokens in the language. Mm -hmm. These uh, symbols are not characters, but they take the words and project them into a vector space where uh, words that are statistically co-occurring a lot are neighbors already. So it's already a simplification of the problem a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, so every word is basically a set of coordinates in a high dimensional space. And then uh, they use some kind of trick to also encode the, the order of the words in the sentence mm -hmm. or in the not just sentence, but 2048 tokens is about a couple pages of text or two and a half pages of text. And so they managed to do pretty exhaustive statistics over the potential relationships between two pages of text, which is tremendous, right? I was just using a single sentence back then mm -hmm. 
And uh, I was um, only looking for first order relationships. And they were really looking for much, much higher level relationships. And what they discover after they fed this with an enormous amount of training data, pretty much the written internet or a subset of it that had some quality, but mm -hmm. mm, substantial portion of the common crawl that uh, they're not uh, only able to reproduce style, but they're also able to reproduce some pretty detailed semantics, like being able to um, add three-digit numbers and multiply two-digit numbers, or to translate between programming languages and things like that. So the results that GPT-3 got, I think, were amazing. By the way, um, I actually didn't check carefully. It's funny, you just mentioned how you coupled semantics to the multiplication. Is it able to do some basic math on two-digit uh, uh, two numbers? Yes. Okay, interesting. I thought, I thought there's a lot of failure cases. It, uh, it basically fails it. if you take larger digit numbers. So four mm -hmm. digit numbers and so on uh, makes carrying mistakes and so on. And if you take large, uh, larger numbers, you don't get useful results at all. And this could be an issue of the training set. Well, there are not that many examples of successful long form edition and standard uh, human written text. And humans aren't very good at doing three digit numbers either. Yeah, and they're not, you're not writing a lot about it. Yeah. And the other thing is that the loss function that is being used is only minimizing surprisal. So it's predicting what comes next in a typical text. It's not trying to go for causal closure first, as we do. Yeah. And But, but the fact that that kind of uh, prediction works to generate text that's semantically rich and consistent is interesting. Yeah. So yeah, so it's amazing that it's able to uh, generate semantically consistent text. Uh, it's not consistent. So the problem is that it loses coherence at some point. But uh, it's also, I think, not correct to say that GPT-3 is unable to uh, deal with semantics at all. Because you ask it to perform certain transformations in text, and it performs these transformations in text. And the kind of uh, additions that it's able to perform are transformations in text, right? And uh, there are proper semantics involved. You can also do more. There was a paper that was generating... Um, lots and lots of um, mathematically correct uh, text and was feeding this into a transformer. And uh, as a result, it was able to learn how to do differentiation and integration mm -hmm. in ways that, according to the authors, Mathematica could not. To which some hate, of the I, people I, in Mathematica responded that uh, they were not using the, uh, Mathematica in the right way and so on. I have not really followed the so this, resolution the, of this conflict. This this part, as a small tangent, I really don't like uh, in machine learning papers, which they often do um, anecdotal evidence. They'll find like one example in some kind of specific use of Mathematica and demonstrate, look, here's, they'll show successes and failures but they won't have a very clear representation of how many cases this actually represents. Yes, but, but uh, I think as a first paper, this is a pretty good start. And yeah, so uh, the take home message I think is that uh, the authors could get better results from this and their uh, experiments mm -hmm. than they could get from the way in which they were using computer algebra systems, which means uh, that was not nothing. Yeah, And uh, it's able to perform substantially better uh, than GPT-3 can based on a much larger amount of training data using the same underlying algorithm. 